is John Berger talking about ghosts? Yes, if a ghost is the presence of something, and that is not. If a ghost is the presence of something that is absent from our day to day life, then yes. Is that what a ghost is? A ghost is. Traditionally speaking, it's a fool, it's a dead person whose soul is kind of somehow tra trapped or something, right? So, rather than putting it in those terms, because that immediately involves um, soul and stuff like that, I would say that it's more about absence and presence. Because that can be haunted by an event as well, so there's memory, and memory comes into it. What do you think a ghost is? I think a ghost... I don't believe in apparitions of the afterlife. Um, I think a ghost is the presence of something that is absent from my day-to-day -day life. I don't think... And by that I'm inferring that ghosts can't be with us for very long periods of time. So you've never seen a ghost? No, I've never seen a ghost. Uh, what is the worst thing about death? The worst thing about death is that life ends, but um, but maybe actually the worst thing about death is that you can only really die once. Like mo most things in your life, you can do more than once. What's the best thing about death? That it, that it, that it means that your life is over, and so makes everything like poignant. There's a deadline. Is poignant good? Yes. Why is poignant good? Because it reminds us that we are breakable and vulnerable, and it shows us the beauty in that. Why do we need to be reminded? Because we don't experience it on a day-to-day -day basis. We forget. Why do you like the book? I like the book because it's not a single narrative, and because it's beautifully written in a very poetic kind of way. Why do you want to ask questions of it? Because it asks, it makes me ask questions. What questions does it make you ask? I need to reread really it <laughs> to really, to really go. But one of them would be, um, you know, what would happen or, or when my mum dies, or when um, people who have entered my life, although briefly, die, like what, what then? Why is it important to you that your stories are included? Because it's, I think it's an important way of honouring, not honouring, but if, if this is an adaptation of sorts rather than just the stimulus then I think to include autobiographical material is appropriate. What is your story? Oh, uh, my story is in the making. Are you at the beginning, the middle or the end? I am just before the middle. The important stuff is kind of just about to happen. Are you climbing an arc, a narrative arc? If it was a jaggedy kind of arc, then yes. <laughs> what is it about questions that turns you on? That they demand an answer.
did the answers even matter? No. Why ask the questions? Because in asking them and in attempting to answer them, I think I am learning something about myself and my relationship to this. Is it important that our personal beliefs are acknowledged? Yes. Why? Because otherwise we would be hiding. Have you hidden before? Yes. Why don't you want to hide now? Because I think this performance... matters and... Within the context of this piece, I, I don't think I want to hide. What do you want this performance to be? Amazing! <laughs> and beautiful! And not groundbreaking, but beautifully formed. And touching and funny and sad. What is it all ultimately about? It's about um, it's about John Berger and his stories and the stories that he makes up and about our stories and the stories that we make up and about giving people, the audience, a framework, a moment to join us in interrogating it all, and thus inter invite them to interrogate themselves. How deep are you prepared to dig? <laughs> quite deep. Not to the bottom. I don't <laughs> think there is a bottom, but quite deep. To your needs? Uh, probably a bit higher, kind of halfway through my thighs. Are you done? Yeah. Why is the beginning easier than the ending? Um, because anything can be a beginning. Because it's going somewhere. And an ending. It's final. And we don't like pinning ourselves down. And endings pin you down. Are you scared of death? No. Are you scared of admitting your death? You're scared? No. Have you ever had a conversation with a dead person? No, but I have earwigged on. On other people talking to the dead? On dead people having conversations. Like being um, like watching a play in my head. You have imagined dead people talking to each other. Yeah. Why did they not talk to you? They don't know that I'm there. Did you want to talk to them? No. Were you hiding? Maybe. If the afterlife is to be designed slash furnished mm. by a contemporary artist, who would you like that mm. to be? I can't, when I read it, I just keep thinking Wayne Hemingway, but that's because he's in my head, because he's doing Dreamland. It would be very retro, delightfully retro. Do you think, the, after, do you think the afterlife it's is retro? Delightfully, yeah, but like a bricolage of retro, like what retro from like every century. So, yeah, because if it's retro from every century, then it's just... Is the afterlife it's, it's just representing every every period in time. Is the afterlife an accumulation of stuff? If I am to imagine a place that I don't think exists, then yes. That's a nice way of that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Imagining it. So if you were to imagine the afterlife as yeah. a space. Kind of like a theatrical storage. Like, a, yeah, a place full of stuff from every time. I like that. Is the afterlife tidy? 
think, not mine. <laughs> what is our connection to things? Yeah, maybe they, the way that they hold stories, maybe they hold bits of people, maybe. Because we can hold on to them. We can hold on to things in a way that we cannot hold mm. on to people. Yeah, and we preserve them and display them and keep them safe and put gloves on to touch them and put them in glass cases and archive them and order them and deduce things from them. And you can't do that with people when they're alive or they're dead. Why throw nothing away? Um, for those reasons. For those, yeah. for those reasons, I guess. I guess. Um, how do you like John? How do you think John Berger would like his funeral to be arranged? Um, I think knowing what we know about him, I think that it would be smells of dirt and earth and I think we'd all dig his grave with our hands and smell the soil <laughs> and roast a pig on a spit in the village in the middle of fucking nowhere um, and there'd be no announcement I don't think not if he not of his design anyway. How long are you prepared to dig? How long? How deep? <laughs> Two different questions. How deep are you prepared to dig? Um I think I'm always prepared to dig too deep. What would you like the audience to do right after the performance? Go and have a stiff drink with friends and then sit, but nobody says anything for longer than normal. Can you tell if somebody's alive or dead from looking at their signature? I feel like the 12 year old in me who adored any book that involved time travel any book where some kid went back and met people from a different time and was suddenly in their world um, would say that it, you know that they'd have curly old fashioned writing or um, uh, yeah and the ten year old girl that used to like ghost stories would say that, um, that maybe they leave like a trail of dust as they're writing like they they're dropping dust. Um, but I also like the idea that you can't, and that if they do exist, or if we imagine that they exist, maybe they're just all over the place, signing their names like everybody else. Have you ever seen a ghost? I have thought that I've seen a lot of dead people a kind of split second in that cliched way. So maybe they're the traces of ghosts in crowds. What is a ghost if not a trace? Mm. What is a ghost? A ghost is maybe the ghost is the brain projecting an image of a dead person but that in remembering the dead person and putting them back together in your head they come out slightly funny so a bit different but maybe that's what ghosts are what is the difference if your head is like a projector then they come out funny. what is the difference between a memory and a ghost well a memory is a memory is 
delicious and private and inside and a ghost is externalised. Maybe a, maybe a ghost is somebody talking about a dead person. Maybe that externalises them, gets them out. Is that why people are scared of ghosts? Because they're not inside. Because they've become externalised. Yeah, maybe. Did Freud do this? He must have done this. Do you think that John Berger is talking about ghosts? I don't know. I, I think yes. Yeah. Yes. Ghosts for him, like, uh, which is what we're talking about. Obviously, ghosts are something, something different to everybody, and I think these are his ghosts. Not just his ghosts from his story, but his version of ghosts. Yes. Yes. Is it important that our personal beliefs are acknowledged? Um, I think if we don't do it consciously, it will, if we don't do it, of, if we don't do it deliberately, then they'll seep out anyway. So I think the choice is not whether to, whether to do it, but how it's done. Why do you want to make this show? There are lots of layers. Um, to see what kind of show we want to make and can make. Because I think this is the show that we nearly made or skirted around in the past. Maybe. And so it's important to do it. Because I love the book. Because I want to make something that we're proud of. Why do you like the book? Sorry, why do you love the book? Partly because of some like weird serendipity whereby it like it felt like it fell into our hands when we needed it most. Um, it appeared. Mm, because it because because they are separate stories that are on a theme. Because if it was because if it was one story from start to finish we wouldn't be interested. Um, because of the people and the places and because I, every time I read it, I pick out new things that join together like a chain through it, like food and um, uh, archiving and um, colours and um, because it's not about how we're going to make a show out of it, it's about what we choose to take from it to make a show. Because it's ours and not anyone else's. Why are we so Hot scared? Rate. Why are we so scared of pinning ourselves down and fixing our position? I don't know, but I think we are. Um, I hope we're getting better at it. I think we need to get better at it. But I do think we want to be kinder and more generous to audiences than we have been in the past, so I'm hoping that that makes us pin down some things, even if we don't reveal those pins completely. What is it ultimately all about? Us making sense of things and putting ourselves in a positioning ourselves somehow, somehow positioning ourselves. Start thinking about be about getting to know our, getting to know ourselves a bit better. Ultimately, I think it's all about. living and not death.